Hi, my name is Rachel, and this is the fly mask tutorial for Ricochet Sewing Company. We're going to start with the eye cups. You should have cut these circles with eight notches, which you can mark with pen or sharpie, or you can cut very small notches with. We're going to fold at the notch and create a pleat that is about half inch depth. And we'll just start with the first pleat and I'll just stitch all the way around the circle and create each of these pleats as I go. So I'll fold at the next mark. And I like to pull my pleat back toward myself. I feel like it goes through the machine easier than pushing it forward but it really doesn't matter which direction they go as long as they all go the same direction. You can see that I'm using an industrial machine here and you can use both industrial or domestic and I've used a domestic just fine. What I like about this is that the table is flush to the machine so I can really push down on that table and manipulate my fabric a little easier push it through, pull it through, um, push those darts against the table. Um, it's just a lot easier than having to hold it up a few inches with that small uh, sewing bed to work with. So I've created all my pleats on this one piece and because I'm using this stiff mesh, it's really pokey on the raw edges and I don't want that against my horse's face. So I'm gonna fold under uh, about a half an inch. Um, it really doesn't matter if it's a half an inch or less. I wouldn't want to do more so that I could maintain the size of the eye cup. So I'm going to just fold it under as I go and stitch along that edge. Then I'm going to have this nice soft folded edge that touches my horse's face instead of that um, that pokey stuff. <clears throat> now, if I'm using the soft insect, the like mosquito netting or the noceum insect mesh, I don't need to do this fold under step. I'm going to take it next to the serger to attach it to the lycra. And so that overlock stitch will be plenty to keep that seam, or I mean that edge, that raw edge, uh, nice and soft. So here you can just see going all the way around and then I'm going to show you that again just so you get another visual and I'm going to speed it up for the next eye cup. That's what your finished eye cup is going to look like. You can see how nicely it forms, nice and even and you can tell that it'll stick away from the eye really nicely. So here's the next one, speeding it up. Just going through it real quick here. And then on to the fold under. So this mesh um, that I'm using is called Fiffer Tech or Fiffer Tex. I can't exactly remember. Um, you can also use something called Pet Screen. So now we've, we're moving into this um, attaching the ears and then the eye cups to the lycra using the serger here. So we're going to attach it just using that circle of the ear. Don't use that extra tab part. I, I just cut that tab for ease so that it's easier to attach this ear. It's such a small circle that it's very hard to work in the round. Um, once It's hard to like close up the ear and then attach it. It's just too small. So we're going to start at the corners. I have uh, the right side up 
of the lycra. And if I, there was a right side for the ear, that would be down. So it'd be right to right sides through the serger. Make sure that your start and finish points are even. And then in the center, we have our notch. So I'm just going to go nice and slow because we have one edge that is concave and one that is convex. So we really need to get them nice and straight together. So match those notches. If you accidentally cut your notch too deep, then you'll want to kind of push it onto that knife and trim it up so you don't have a hole after you do your serging. So I got to that notch, which is the halfway point. And then I will match up my finish points, straighten it up, and serge the second half. Both sides are going to work the same way. They're, um, the ear pieces are symmetrical, so the centers will be the same. There's no difference on which ear you use for which side. I actually messed up the other one, so I'm not showing it in the video. I had to um, rethread the machine a little bit and continue on that. So then you're going to fold it in half and start from the top of the ear. There's a notch there too that's going to be at your fold. You're going to match up those seams where the net meets the lycra. And you're going to serge all the way down to the edge of the lycra points too. So through the seam where mesh meets lycra and onto that point. So when you stitch into this fold, you're actually just going to go a few stitches and then you're going to stop, lift the presser foot. Mine's actually using my foot on this industrial. Pull that, those tails, those thread tails into your seam allowance and then stitch them in. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. And then you're just going to kind of, yeah, pull those those tails to the side and they'll just get cut off with the knife. And then match up those seams. We're going to do something called staggering the seams, which means on one, like on that top piece, you're going to push the seam allowance towards the machine and the bottom piece, maybe you'll push the seam allowance towards yourself. Doesn't matter which way you go, but if they go opposite directions, that's going to reduce the bulk. And I'm going to demonstrate that um, further in to the tutorial when we're finishing the hems of the fly mask. I'll, I'll show you that a little closer. So again, you're going to stitch um, through the mesh, like all the way beyond the mesh to the next points where the lycra meet. Kind of straighten it out and this will show you where those thread tails got stitched in. That way you have less um, thread sticking out at the top of the ear because I don't want you to trim them super short where they might kind of unravel and you get a hole. But that way the tails don't tickle the ear either. So one step I missed, um, oh, I'm already moving on to the eye cup. But what I missed is if I had used that stiff mesh for the ear, I would have also wanted to fold under half inch at the base and done a, a stitch to keep that fold under. Okay, so here you're seeing that it's right to right sides. And I kind of have to think about it each time by laying the cup on top and then pulling the lycra back. Otherwise, I have a tendency to attach things incorrectly. <laughs> um, so right to right sides, and then you're going to match one of the notches on the lycra to one of the pleat lines that you see. Now, I did mess up in cutting, and I cut the quarter horse eye hole and the cob eye cup. So I kind of have to bunch the lycra to get all of the notches to match the pleats. 
but I should really have to stretch the lycra just slightly as I go to match those notches. It doesn't really matter. It's not such a big difference in this case that it's going to decrease the quality of the mask. It's just not going to be as pretty because you're going to see some uh, like little gathers that form on the front of the lycra. So I'm just going all the way around and kind of making sure that the lycra is out of the way, all of that excess lycra, so that I don't accidentally stitch it in like that. I have a tendency to do that too. If I'm not paying attention, then all of a sudden I have stitched other pieces to the part that I'm stitching and then we have to do some seam ripping. So you can experiment with if you like the mesh on top or if you like the lycra on top. In this case, I definitely, I just kind of went with what I remember doing the last time. But sometimes it's nice to have the stretchy one on bottom. I don't remember what worked well or work, what worked better, I should say. So just experiment with that and see how you feel about it. So I'm actually going to go back and top stitch on this one. Originally, I had surged instead of stitched to connect the eye cup, and that did not work that well, um, even though that might be what it says in the directions, because I was trimming the mesh, which created those pokey edges, and... Um, it was the surgery was just kind of having a hard time overlapping some of the bulky layers. But in the case of this stiffer mesh, the mesh doesn't stretch anyway. So you don't need to surge it or zigzag stitch it. A straight stitch is going to be just fine. And so since I also did the incorrect sizes and it's not super pretty on top, that's why I wanted to top stitch this one. So if you're going to top stitch it, make sure the seam allowance is going towards the lycra side and top stitch on the lycra. If you're using the softer mesh, of course, you can just surge it onto the lycra and that's plenty. But these connections don't necessarily need to stretch anyway. It might be nice if the ear part stretched just a tiny bit, but it's really not that big a deal. I think there's plenty of space. So now we're going to connect our, our left and our right sides. And we're going to do this on the serger so that we can maintain that stretch. Of course, you don't have to do it on the serger. If you have a home machine with different stitches, you can use the stretch stitches over the or the overlock stitches, or you can use a straight stitch and um, set it to a longer stitch length and stretch the fabric slightly as you go. So I'm just going from the pole to the top of the nose and just making sure that I keep my um, pieces even. So I always like go back down to the end points and line them up and then I find the centers and make sure everything's lined up. So I'll grab those end points there. And then I'll probably pinch at the center. You can use pins but um, if you're using a serger you got to pull those pins before you get to it. So I kind of go a f every few inches. When you get to those eye cups, you kind of got to smush them because they get a little in the way and they want you, they want the fabric to pull away from the machine to make room. So it's a little difficult. So sometimes I have gaps there and I have to go back and stitch, stitch that again. And then I'm going to do the jaw area. Same deal, top to bottom, pretty simple. And I think when I did this with my home machine, I had one of those overlock stitches. They just take so much longer that I have a hard time um, stitching with those. 
I don't mind zigzag. I kind of like zigzag, but I feel like that's more of a finishing, like an kind of like a top stitch for me on stretch fabric, whereas I want to have that overlock. But it's totally personal preferences. Okay, so here I'm going to show you the staggering the seams again. Um, the second one, I'm, I swear, is going to be a better view. But what I did here was I notched it. So this is the hem for the um, throat and then the nose band. I clipped a notch in the seam allowance so that I could turn part of the seam allowance to the left and part of the seam allowance to the right and then fold it over. So you're reducing that bulk, the bulk of having the seam allowance lay on top of itself. So look at that. One to one side, the other to the other side. Fold at that uh, snip. And then you've reduced that bulk greatly of if you just folded it over and it all lied on laid on top of each other. So I folded it over about half an inch. And then I'm going to stitch like a quarter inch and then like a three eighth inch line. I'm using my straight stitch for this um, so that I can just keep using my industrial machines. But I do have a cover stitch, like a home cover stitch machine that makes a beautiful stitch. I just think a lot of people don't have that. Um, when I did do this uh, mask all on domestic machines, I did a zigzag on my Singer and that was great. So in order to use a straight stitch on this stretch fabric and wanting to maintain the stretch, what you do is you just give it a slight pull as you're stitching so that it stitches it stretched out. And as long as the fabric has good recovery, meaning it goes back to its original shape after being stretched, this should be easy. If it doesn't have good recovery, it's going to end up all um, weird and wrinkly and stretched out. But Lycra spandex is usually great for that. So I'm running a second stitch line that's about an eighth inch or less from that first one. And again, I'm stretching it as I go. I'm not stretching it to the max. I'm just pulling slightly. So I'm going to show you that you can still stretch it and the stitches are not going to pop. Check that out. All right, so nose band. Or nose, yeah, I guess you call it the nose band. It's not like an additional band, but it's the nose band area. Snip the seam allowance without going through that final seam line. Stagger your seams, fold it over. And I pin just to hold those all in place. But I'm just pinning where those seams are. And then I'll go and fold like halfway in between and just kind of eyeball that it's half inch and hold it. Almost done, one more hem. This probably took me two hours in the shop to film, but I did make a few mistakes. <laughs> um, I think in, in like, when I was doing it really efficiently, like factory style, where you do a bunch of one step and then a bunch of the next step, I think it might have come out too and at like 20 minutes to an hour. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I would say it really should be a 20 minute project, but maybe that didn't count cutting. But I would say if you can do this in an hour, you're doing pretty good and it does make it worth it because then you know how it's put together and if any of the seams rip while the horse is wearing it. You know exactly how to fix it. And there's our beautiful fly mask. Um, I am welcome to any constructive criticism and feedback. Please be nice about it. I don't want to get burnt out um, by having to answer 
not nice things, but I definitely want to hear feedback because I'm new at this pattern making thing and making a video tutorial was not super easy for me. <laughs> so um, let me know what you got to say and good luck. Have fun. Bye.